ABC Kindred Teach presents Child of the Flower Song People, Luz Jimenez, Daughter of the Nawa, written by Gloria Amescua, illustrated by Duncan Tonatiu. A girl stared at the star sprinkling the hammock of sky. Like many other nights, she listened to the whisperings of the ancient Aztecs in the wind. She heard their shashchiqui katul, their flower song. She listened as the elders repeated tales their grandfathers had told, tales their grandfathers' grandfathers had told. How sacred streams and mountains protect them, how the Nawa lost their land to Cortez, the conqueror, and to the Spaniards who followed him. She was Luz Jimenez, child of the Flower Song people, the powerful Aztecs who called themselves Nawa, who lost their land, but who did not disappear. In Milpa Alta, a village slung between two mountains, Luce's father harvested maguey and corn. She watched closely as her mother taught her how to grind corn in a metate, how to twist yarn with her toes, how to weave on a loom. Luz was curious about everything, which mushrooms were good to eat and which would make you sick, which popote could be brooms, which herbs medicine. She hummed as she worked, words glowing and swirling in her head in the Aztec language Nahuatl. This was life for the Nahua, and Luz soaked it all in. Evenings by the fire, Luz listened eagerly to stories about the mountain boy, Tepastan, the son of a god, how he never missed when he shot quail and turkey for the people to eat, how he hung bells on a steeple no one could reach, and how he outwitted a man-eating giant, and how Malitzin, betrayer of the Aztecs, had swept to the top of a mountain where she cries in the wind at night, pulling her long black hair. Luz wove all of these stories into her heart. Through them she tasted bitter sorrow, how the Nawa suffered in sweet joy, how her people survived. Luz was a child of the flower song people. Mornings on the way to market, Luce and her mother passed a teacher's house. Students bent over reading. Luce carried an empty place inside. She yearned to know what was written on the papers. A secret longing began to bud in her heart. The secret fluttered lightly like wings in her chest. She would study hard. She would learn what the squiggles meant. She would learn to read. But Luz, like the other native people, was a forgotten shadow to those who governed. There was no public school for them. Then suddenly, the government offered free schooling. No, 
required it to turn the native children into modern ones, like the descendants of the Spanish who ruled the country who thought only their ways were right and proper. Mornings, Luz learned from Spanish school books. Afternoons, she studied dressmaking, drawing, and baking bread. Not the corn tortillas of her people. Luz excelled and won many prizes, and her voice sparkled as she told Nawa stories in secret to other children. If the students spoke Nahuatl instead of Spanish, the teachers punished them. They had to give up their Nawa clothes, wear modern ones like in the cities. The budding flower in Luz's heart might have withered, but it did not. These new rules were changing the Nawa, but Luz was different. She longed to blossom, carrying the beautiful traditions of her people with her. Luz found strength in remembering how old Tootley, not wanting to let his daughter go, turned her and the young man she loved into mountains. Is Taxawatl, sleeping lady, and Popoca Tepetal, smoking mountain, how the mountains protected the people and brought precious rain. Luz was a child of the flower song people. She wanted to protect the Nawa ways. Her body tingling, Luz spilled her secret to very few. I want to be a teacher when I grow up. Her secret yearning was beginning to bloom, imagining teaching future generations, but at 13, her dreams whirled away in a storm. The Mexican Revolution came to Milpa Alta. Soldiers stole their food. They burned her precious home and school to rubble. Her father, like nearly all of the men, was shot and killed. Luz and her mother and sisters fled to Mexico City at night, stars lighting their way. Others followed. Luz said, not a soul was left. In the large, unfamiliar city, clogged with too many sounds, smells, and people, the widows and girls struggled to make a living. They sold homemade atole, tamales, or handicrafts. But Luz, with growing strength, opened up to something much different for Anawa. She found a job posing for artists drawn to her strong features, her sturdy body, her large, dark, eyes. As she posed, she taught them the gifts she had learned from her beginnings, grinding corn into a matate, twisting yarn with her toes, weaving on a loom. Luz was a natural model and teacher. She understood what the artist needed without being told. Artists until then had painted the Spanish heritage of Mexico, the light-skinned Europeans and their religious beliefs, but these artists of the 20th century honored the native people who had been colonized by the Spanish, stripped of their language and culture, shamed and mistreated. Luz represented her people well, through her indigenous features, her skills, and being true to her roots. Luz became the most well-known model in all of Mexico for artists like Diego Rivera, Fernando Liel, Tina Maudati, Jean Charlot, and others. Painters painted, photographers clicked, sculptors carved. The world recognized the beauty and strength of the native people after 500 years of being in shadows. 
through loose, the world came to know the spirit of Mexico. Though many artists sought out loose, her heart still longed to teach. After the revolution, Luz returned to Milpa Alta and applied to be a teacher, but without being given a reason, Luz was rejected. Once again, her dreams seemed to swirl away forever like petals on the wind. But in the city, she had become friends with artists and scholars. These scholars wanted to learn Nahua culture. They wanted to learn Nahua language. They wanted to go to Milpa Alta. So Luz at last became a teacher, weaving the threads of her flower song, Shashchikwi Katal, her language and culture into their hearts. Eagerly, she led anthropologists and artists on tours of Milpa Alta. There, she showed them how the Nawa knew good mushrooms from bad, which popote made strong brooms, how they used herbs for medicine. Luz also took them to Kalama, where the visitors watched native festival dancers and worshipers who had walked for days to place candles or flowers at the church. Luz brought to life the world of the native Mexican people and their pride in their culture and roots. Inspired by Luz's teaching, the artists painted, the scholars wrote, Luz was a powerful woman of the flower song people, Luz told her tales to a college professor, Fernando Horcasitas, an anthropologist. He wrote down what she patiently told him in Nahuatl, word by word, phrase by phrase, week by week. Luz was a living link to the Aztecs. Her words published in books to teach future generations the language of her people. Professor Horcasitas asked her to help him teach Nahuatl at the College of Mexico City. Like the mountains Iztaccíhuatl and Popocatepetl, she protected the dying Nawa culture. Her memories were some of the precious few written in the lively voice of one of their own as it was disappearing in the wind. At long last, Luz's heart bloomed fully. Her dream of being a teacher had come true. True in more ways than the young girl gazing at the sprinkled stars could have ever imagined. Just by being Nawa, just by being herself, Luz breathed life into Shashchikwi Katal, the flower song of the Nawa, and carried their fading voice into the future.